Today's faction focus is on the Dark Elves of Warhammer 40k. This is gonna be awesome, yo. Not that kind of elf. We're talking about the Dark Eldar. Let's take a look. The Dark Eldar's army rule is Power from Pain. This is, of course, the expected rule to serve as their army rule in 10th edition. But what is unexpected is how it's changed. It no longer grants a predetermined benefit as you progress from one battle round to the next. Instead, it grants you pain tokens, which are then spent on perks. It works thusly. You gain a predetermined amount of starting pain tokens based on the battle size, and you gain another pain token each time an enemy unit is destroyed or fails Battleshock. These tokens can be spent in different phases to grant single units a specified perk. In the movement phase, it allows units to re-roll their advances. In the charge phase, it gives units a re-roll to their charge rolls. And in the shooting or fight phase, it gives units full re-rolls to hit. And I have mixed feelings on this rule. Let's start with the good. Mechanically, it's a system which has a stronger thematic abstraction for gaining power from pain. The older system gave you more and more perks regardless of what you did. This new system creates a design space to grant you, the player, opportunity to derive power from the pain you inflict, creating a gameplay system for you which better abstracts the ethos of the Dark Eldar. Too bad GW decided to go the opposite way for a different faction. I mean, with the blood tithe, corn cares not where the blood flows. With Blessings of Corn, you get a system where corn just doesn't care. You get perks regardless. But I digress. I appreciate this kind of rule design philosophy the new Power of Pain presents, though it is only a half-step, and a somewhat clumsier one, towards the system I've been advocating for the Dark Eldar. But progress is progress, I suppose. On to the bad. Losing out on powerful army-wide perks certainly hurts. The big one for me is the army-wide advance and charge. However, we all know the faction focuses shown thus far have demonstrated GW is most often terrible at showcasing the faction's toolkits relative to player perceptions. Case in point, you might be wondering if Dark Eldar still have access to Advance and Charge, a rule which is obviously powerful, but goes a long way to characterize their identity. And rather than pointing this out here, it's mentioned down at the bottom of the article. <laughs> Yeah, the previous Power From Pain rule you're probably most concerned about isn't mentioned up here where it's most suitable. You have to go dig down through the muck. The incompetence is painful. Anyways, I'll mention it here. Advance and Charge is now only for Witch Cult units and is accessible through a stratagem. Continuing on, gaining a consistent single pain point when units are destroyed or when failing Battleshock does seem problematic to me. Immediately, I think of armies like Custodes and Knights, where Dark Elder aren't going to be able to reap as much value. I know GW wants these army rules to be simple, but should this not follow a structure akin to the Bring It Down secondary where larger units generate more pain tokens? Though I'll steel man this a bit. Perhaps having an army rule like Power From Pain, which encourages having big fat units, helps balance out an army rule like Oaths of Moment, which encourages the opposite. Another point of pain for me is having to spend tokens at the start of a phase. It's fine for gaining hit rerolls for shooting and fighting since those are attack sequence based and often involve rolling several dice. But in the case of advancing and charging, it's just a single roll. And importantly, the benefit gained is not increasing the distance, it's allowing you to re-roll. And so there will inevitably be circumstances where you spend a pain token only to not need the re-roll, thus wasting the already limited resource of power. Putting a player in a position where, based on luck, they waste the power they worked to gain. It creates bad game feel. Here's a system where you do work to gain power, and using that same system, it results in you being clumsy with that power, allowing it to be wasted due to luck, creating some very distasteful ludonarrative dissonance with the mechanics. And lastly, I think it's a missed opportunity to not call them pain points. The Dark Eldar have a reputation of being sick bastards, and you could have provided them with a system where they could have literally claimed they are collecting PP. Their detachment rule is Real Space Raiders. Thematically, this is the appropriate choice. This initial detachment for the Index period ought to reflect the most prototypical aspect of the faction, and the Real Space Raiding parties made up of the three sub-armies of the Dark Eldar certainly feels most appropriate in that regard. As for the ability itself, it simply gives you one additional pain token if your army contains one or more Archon, one or more Succubi, and one or more Homunculus. It is a once-per-battle bonus, so it's not the sexiest. 
And the article doesn't make it seem like there are ways to gain more pain points beyond what is laid out in the army rule. So the Dark Eldar must be so potent that GW has deemed whatever pain tokens you get must be sufficient. Moving on to unit previews. First up, we got the Venom Transport. Most notably, we got a drop in movement down to 14 inches from 16 inches, but a bump in toughness up to T6 from 5. Looking at the war gear, splinter weapons are now anti-infantry 3+. And some interesting ability tags have been added to either ranged weapon option to add some further distinction between them, which I think is good. Ability-wise, the Venom has several core abilities, notably Deep Strike, Firing Deck 6 for its 6 occupants, and Stealth. Its unique ability is Athletic Aerialists, which allows units to embark onto it at the end of the fight phase, creating room for some interesting design space which, at the very least, can keep a unit better protected on the enemy turn. And lastly, the Venom has a 6-up invulnerable save. An interesting point of note, though, is that on the back of the card, the Venom Transport rules allow you to combat squad Cabalite Warriors and Witch units so that they can fit, which creates room to leverage some half-squads which could possess more special weapons than they would have ordinarily. And nicely, we get the emblematic battle line unit for the Dark Eldar, Cabalite Warriors. Big takeaway for me here is we can see they are very fast at movement 8. Looking at their weapons, Splinter Rifles are now a flat 2 attack assault weapon, with the Anti-Infantry 3 Plus associated with Splinter. It enables Cabalite Warriors to close a ton of ground and maintain their firing efficiency. The Dark Lance has gone up in strength to 12, where Blasters have remained at 8, creating a greater difference in utility between the two weapons, with their damage both becoming more variable but not to the extremes of 8th edition. On the ability front, their unique ability is Sadistic Raiders, which gives them the sticky obsec rule we've seen on a few troop units now but uniquely they can leverage it while in their transports, which is nice for the Dark Eldar's mobilized style of play. Under War Gear abilities, the Phantasm Grenade Launcher gives the unit the grenade's keyword, and they also have a 6-up invulnerable save. So, it seems that while some of the more potent perks from the old Power of Pain table are no longer accessible through the new Power from Pain, it seems to be the case that the army-wide 6-up invulnerable save from Inert to Suffering is baked into their datasheets. On the weapon preview front, we got the Talos' Twin Haywire Blaster. It now fires two attacks, which are anti-vehicle 4-plus with devastating wounds. So it's got that potent mortal wound generating combo versus vehicles. But importantly, it's twin linked, so you can re-roll those wound rolls. We also get a look at Lilith Hesperax Blades. Eight attacks with sustained hits too, and always wounding infantry on twos positions Lilith to be a unit which I suspect will be very fun to field. And the article mentions she has an ability called Thrilling Spectacle, where she can once per battle bump her attacks up to 12 and gain a 3-up invulnerable save. And keep in mind, Power from Pain can give her full rerolls to hit. Tremendous. I mean, who wouldn't want to see Lilith just turn an entire infantry squad into a pile of pieces? And in our stratagem spotlight, we got Alliance of Agony. Used at the start of any phase for one command point and one pain token. You can empower an Archon's unit, a Succubi's unit, and a Homunculus's unit. Three for the price of one. But you can only use it if all three units are actively in play. And that's it for this one. Regarding the rules shown, I'm pretty mixed. I genuinely have grievances with how power from pain can result in you wasting pain tokens. But as a system, I suspect it'll be mechanically more fun to play with than what was previously available. Everything else looks suitably Dark Eldar, and I really like even the little that was shown with Lilith. As for the preview itself, it was fine. Army and detachment rules were present, but crucial details needing to be parsed out of the conclusatory text rather than defining them where they would be most imperative is stupid. Though 10 points to the Dark Eldar preview for showing us Cabalite Warriors. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. But tell me, what did you think of this faction focus? 